it seems everywhere I look, no matter what angle I go in in this room, I just seem to get reflection on my glasses from the windows. Sorry about that. Um, right, okay. Here's the velvet, uh, which is not, this velvet is not quite capturing the right colour in this room. Here in the picture on the camera it looks a bit more silvery, but it's actually a bit more of a rich gold, a bit more of a deeper gold than that. But still a sort of faded look, which I'm going for, and I love this fabric. It's perfect. And these curtains, let me push this back a bit, are absolutely huge. That's the size of the bag they're in. Or not quite in. <laughs> But it's a bit of a dilemma because I'm, they are beautiful, massive, big um, vintage theatre curtains and oh, I just, I'm going to struggle cutting into them. It almost seems sacrilege to cut into beautiful curtains like that. Oh, this is, this is the horrible thing that us sewers face all the time. We get beautiful fabric and we have to set to them with a pair of scissors. But I think I'm going to have to get over it and just get on with it because um, it is lovely fabric, isn't it? And it's perfect. It'd be perfect for curtains for my camper. And then I start thinking, yeah, but it'd be perfect for a big wedding cloak, wouldn't it, Helen? And then I think, oh, maybe I should find something else to be the camper curtains and use that for a wedding cloak. And then I go around in circles. Ah, horrible, horrible. No, I'm sticking with them. I'm sticking with them. I'm going to use that fabric. I actually bought it to be a backdrop for photo shoots and I used it once and I didn't actually like the effect. It looked a bit too amateurish. It looked like, um, I don't know, some pervy amateur glamour photographer might use as a background. So I didn't, haven't really used it as that. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Go on, you can do it. You can get this scissors, you can cut into that gorgeous fabric, you can. Um, okay. For the lining though, as you can see, they aren't lined. Um, it's just really heavy, sort of, coarse canvas. I and mean, it's still actually quite nice on the back. Oh, I wish you could see the proper colour, I need to get the hang of white balance, this has gone far too bright. Oh, is that a bit better? Anyway, sorry, getting distracted. I have gathered together a whole load of um, saris, um, scarves and stuff, which I think I'm going to use to line them with so that the curtains look pretty on the outside. I'm going to go with this one. This is a bit of fabric... <clears throat> That hasn't been made up into anything, presumably because of this little burn here. Um, oh, there's a few actually. There's another one there and another couple there. So I'll have to work around that and work around these because I know that will break my sewing machine needle. I don't know what, what Indians use on their sewing machines so that they don't snap the needles the whole time because the amount of times I've seen this sort of fabric or even with like rhinestones and stuff they seem to have magic needles that just go through it anyway so I've got this huge bit of fabric that I'm guessing was intended for a big sari before it got damaged I think I'm going to start with this as my curtain lining because I can't see myself using this for anything else to be honest the pattern whilst beautiful I don't think would particularly work well for uh, the sort of clothes I make really it's a little bit circusy but still a little bit too much the pattern is a little bit too much for most people I should think so I'm going to start by using that and then probably this one and then I've got a couple more on the go at the ready this one works well as well actually that one goes better I think those two go quite nicely together so I'll go with those two to begin with for the, to line the curtains 
so that it looks pretty on the outside and all the curtains are closed as well so I've not really um, like I said I'm not focusing very well at the moment so I'm going to take a little bit of time out from Ocean and get these camper van curtains sorted and if I can't find the cushion covers the cushion covers front seat covers for um, for the front seats of the van I might make some of those as well I don't know if I'll do that in velvet or not. I'll have to think about it. Okay, well that's it for me for the moment. Um, I better get on with it. Well, there was no point in pretending that there was gonna be enough space to do this in my study. So I've come into the living room to spread out the curtains. I've rolled the rug back. I've given the floor a good hoover. Um, and I have with me the tape measure, my genius um, pen, which um, you can mark on fabric and and then a few minutes later it just goes. So I can mark my measurements on the fabric without having to worry about it. Um, my list of window measurements and the biggest right angled thing portable thing that I could think of which was a, a whiteboard to do my right angles with just to make it a little easier um oh, under my scissors I'm just gonna get my scissors right I think I'm good to go um, Oh my goodness, these are so heavy. Oh, that's worrying. That looks mouse chewed. Oh, I hope the curtain's all right. That does look mouse chewed. Oh no! Don't judge me too harshly for having mice. I think the actual curtains are okay. I should get the hoover onto this. We do live in a 400 year old house in the middle of a field virtually. Main road that side, field that side. And it's just inevitable to have mice even though we have three bluing cats useless cats um e, not so nice i think i might need to wash these first now oh that's a real pain and it's raining i have two curtains i'm gonna go through them <laughs> and i'll hopefully just need to wash one of them and hopefully the other one will be big enough I'll see how I go. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of 400 year old house, we have the most gorgeous floorboards. It's a shame I didn't start a YouTube channel years ago when we moved here because this floor was just carpeted with boards over the top. No, carpeted with boards under the carpet, covering up. these beautiful really wide elm boards which I was just so delighted when we discovered right first things first let's sort out this mouse damage oh there is damage there is damage oh well I wasn't expecting to have to deal with that before I turn the fabric over to start doing the measurements I just had to show it to you laid out I still can I couldn't even fit it across the whole floor but oh my goodness what beautiful fabric 
and look tons and tons and tons of it so I'm hopeful you know I didn't want to I mean look this is still this is a pile it just it's endless it goes on and on and on it's huge I can't believe how big it is I didn't remember it being this big so anyway I think I'm not going to have to worry. I think I'm going to have plenty to do the curtains for the camper and still, if I want to, um, use some of the fabric to make a wedding cloak because it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It would be so lovely as a cloak. Um, right, well, uh, I, shall get on, I shall get on with it. Oh, no, you don't, Rafiki. Mister off no you're not budging come on <laughs> look look he's just rolled over <laughs> i'm trying to pick you up rafiki oh dear just look at that soppy little boy <sighs> Sorry, this is not meant to be a cat video. Right, the good news is the um, mouse damage is just a tiny little section. It's going to be fine just to work around. There's plenty of fabric to work around and then I can wash the rest um, later. It, I just, it's only just one small corner that the mice have been at. So that'll be fine. Be fine. <laughs> This is the one that goes over the front windscreen and all the right the way around the front two door windows. Oh, just one, two, three, four, five, just six more to go, that's all. Oh, so hot and sweaty. This is quite hard work. Right, let's crack on. <laughs> plenty of cotton. This is the fourth time I've filled up the bobbin. I can't believe how much cotton this is going through just doing the edges. camper back um, you never believe what happened after it went to the garage to get sorted because the water cooling system 
it seems was the reason why the engine blew up. The people we bought the camper from didn't fit the new engine properly and there was no water reservoir apparently. Um, so it ran out of water, it overheated and blew up. So I um, literally got it back the morning I was supposed to be going to Cornwall to a friend's wedding, campsite all booked. Um, and on the way home, the, uh, on the way home, the exhaust fell off. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go in the camper van. I literally cried and ate lots of chocolate. Um, very upset about that. But, so the exhaust went off to be fixed. Well, we had to order the parts. The exhaust is now fixed. And I've got, the camper came back this morning. It is Friday, no, it is Thursday. Tomorrow it's Friday. And tomorrow I'm leaving for the New Forest Fairy Festival. So I'm fixing these. Yeah, so I'm fixing all the curtains at the moment. Um, I'm really cross. Whoever's been in here has pulled some of the curtains off, so I've got to re-put put them back into the rails. Um, what else? Give it a good thorough clean. And yeah, a few more bits and pieces to do before I can even start packing for the festival tomorrow. So a little bit of a panic. And so of course I'm, <laughs> instead of doing the practical things, I'm busy sticking, <laughs> gluing pretty tassels onto the um, curtain ties. Of course that's the most important thing, isn't it? To have pretty tassels on your curtain ties. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, and hopefully the Velcro will stick. I've just used super glue, so we'll see what happens. So I realised that I haven't actually finished off the video about the curtains, so I thought I'd better do that quickly. Um, we've been away in the camper now, curtains will work perfectly. Um, the only problem I'm having is with the fastenings because um, the super glue isn't strong enough to hold the Velcro on for holding these straps on. But other than that, I'm very happy. It all looks good. And so here's a quick look. Um, yeah, so the gluing on the tassels worked fine. It's just, and it's, actually that one, the Velcro is all right. Oh, I won't pull them all out, but um, here's just a quick look. In fact, I don't know why that one's not done up. There's that one. Yeah, here's where the Velcro is coming off the bit. That needs to be sort of glued down to there. And there's that one. And that one. Yeah, the lining. Obviously didn't do the measurement quite right on that one. The lining hangs down a bit lower. But never mind. That can be tucked in. It doesn't show when it's, yeah. It looks like that looks fine. And of course, that looks fine. Yeah, and I'm pleased with all the linings. They did work out fine. And they're not fading too much. Um, the cloth that I've used, these old, um, this throw, which I think came from my sister, actually, it's fading dreadfully. That, I mean, yeah, it was this, it was this sort of quite, that's quite pink, but it was actually more of a maroony colour when she gave it to me, and it's just like totally turned orange everywhere the sun's hit it. Yeah, it was sort of dark red originally, which I liked. I hope that's not a wet patch. No, it's fine. But yeah, it's going quite pale orange. I don't suppose I really mind it, but it, um, it's just annoying. But the lining is holding up so far in the sun. Yeah, might have faded a bit there, but yeah, so, and the other one's tucked at the back there. So that's them. Um, it's 
it's been quite a long video so I'll leave it at that. I'm happy we've been away in it a couple of times and all good. They're really good at blocking out the sun so that's ideal. That's it from me. Goodbye.